told that he would have that 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 he would have missed that. As, as you're saying, it's not in any uh, famous books. This formula. I will show you. I'll show you in a, in a second. Okay. It, it's it's interesting how the mathematical memory can forget things. <laughs> okay, but uh, so before we go and take a look at just why they're hard to see in Wallace. Uh, let's just look at these and see what they are. You'll notice that uh, they all start with odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7. And then the denominators are all twice that no number. So 5 becomes 10, 7 becomes 14. All the denominators stay the same. And all the numerators uh, increase as squares of odd numbers. So they have an interesting pattern. And what they equal on the right changes. The first one has a pi in the denominator, then in the numerator, then in the denominator, then in the numerator, and so on. It goes like that. A very interesting fact is that if you multiply this one times this one, look what you get. You get 4. If you multiply this one times this one, the pi's cancel, you get uh, the threes cancel, and you get four times four. This one, this product gives you two times two, this product gives you four times four, okay? And they keep, keep doing it. And that has a lot to do, apparently, with how they were originally derived in Wallace. And I'll show that at the end of the talk. So, uh, and here's just more of the same thing. Uh, and they go on forever. Yeah, this will give you some idea why they've been forgotten. Mm -hmm. Here's this is a facsimile. Uh, this little table is a facsimile uh, uh, reproduction from Wallace, from Wallace's original letter. Okay. Now look what it's got there. First of all, it starts out with a square. Okay. What is that square? That square is pi over four. A square equal to pi over 4. Now, why didn't he write pi over 4? Well, in 1656, nobody used pi to represent 3.141. Okay, that came with Euler 100 years later. So, what Wallace was into, he wanted to square the circle. Okay, get the, find out what the area is under the unit circle, say. So, so that's what he used, and he, that's a quarter of a, a quarter of a, a unit circle. So, so there. So I guess I, I'm just guessing that's why he used the square. The squaring so Okay. Now, here are the frat the continued fractions. Now, it's hard to see it. Okay. I'm trying to expand it here, and he's written that as one, one half, nine halves plus. That's the first one. And here's the second one. 3, 1, 6, 9, 6, and, and so on. Here, 5, 1, 10, 9, 10. Okay, he's written them in. Now, he's also written them in a few other places in the book. He's not the only place. But, uh, but they're, they don't s stare you in, you know, they, he, he doesn't knock you down with them. Uh, underneath here, he's, he's figuring out the value of the, of the continued fraction. He's calculating. And finally, he gets them all in terms of the, uh, the squares. Uh, and, and the alternate ones involve the reciprocal of those squares. Okay. A uh, hundred years later, Euler wrote a paper entitled On the Continued Fractions of Wallace. And Euler managed to find another way of finding all these continued fractions. But the way in which he does it depends heavily on what Wallace said in his, in his book. Uh, Wallace's book was only recently translated into English by Jackie Steedall who is a uh, British uh, uh, mathematical historian. 
And Jackie also wrote a beautiful paper on the collaborations between Wallace and Brautner, which is where I first heard about the, this infinite sequence. Uh, and she, she's called, and it was only about five years ago that she wrote that paper and called to the attention of modern mathematicians the fact that uh, Euler seems to be the last person who remembered these things. Okay. And after that, they, they seem to have, they appear to have disappeared from the. Now it's also reasonable that, that uh, they would be that they would disappear because Wallace is really tough to read. I mean. I have uh, worked with my students translating a number of Euler's papers. And Euler's papers aren't, I mean, they, you have to work hard, sure. But Wallace is really bad news reading. He goes on and on talking about things that, that just seem to be superfluous. You know, and he really wears you out. It's really tiring. Uh, but at the, end of the, the, at, at the end of the book, it gets to be brilliant. It, there are fireworks at the end of the book when he goes and derives his infinite product for pi. Okay, so much for that. Okay, and uh, I may at times use this notation, CF, continued fraction, for x, to stand for this because this is the standard form in which all those continued fractions appear. You have an x, and then you have twice x in the denominator, and then the uh, odd number squared in the numerator. Okay. Now, here's another morphing. Okay. A few minutes ago, I started with Wallace, and I morphed it into Vieta. Now I'm going to start with Brautner, and I'm going to morph it into Wallace. And here's the formula that does it, simple formula. And again, it has a parameter n. And uh, half of it is the uh, partial product from Wallace. Here, the, this is the first factor in Wallace, the second, the third, out, out to the n. So this gives you the partial product from Wallace, not the whole thing. So that's here. And then you have this continued fraction, which is of the uh, Brautner type. So and you've got a parameter in there, n. So here we go. Here we'll, we'll do the morphing. When n is 0, you have Brautner's first continued fraction. And when n is 1, you get the same thing on the left. You always get 4 over pi. And now you get 1 factor from Wallace. And then you have to jump 4. These go mod 4. 1 to 5. A, a Wallace continued fraction. And there's a factor of 1 third here. The reason for that, and, and, and when you have a 9 or 5th here, is that this ratio here gradually approaches 2 because the original Wallace product had 2 over pi, and that's where the extra 2 comes from. Okay, okay. so these keep doing that. Each time in the uh, morphing, you get an extra Wallace factor, and you move down to another, uh, going mod 4, Brautner continued fraction. And you'll notice with these continued fractions, because the denominators keep getting bigger and bigger here, okay, this part gets very small. And so most of this is right here. And uh, there's another one uh, down here. And then finally, as n goes to infinity, you get the uh, ball is part. So uh, that's just an observation that there's actually, you, you can arrange that uh, in, in that uh, morphing like way. Oh. And uh, here's another morphing of Wallace and the crap. You'll notice we went mod 4. We started with 1, and then we went 5, and then we went 9, and so on. Now, we were skipping the others 
remember uh, in, in the list of Brownner continued fractions, they went 1, 3, 5, 7. So we skipped 